we uh, started this conduction portion in the last lecture and if you remember we derived an equation that equation was known as heat diffusion equation and the equation was basically partial square x sorry partial square t by partial x square plus partial square t by partial y square plus partial square t by partial z square plus q dot g over k equals 1 over alpha partial t by partial t okay that was the heat diffusion equation which we derived in the last lecture and this is the heat diffusion equation in which coordinate system cartesian coordinate system okay so if you see these three derivatives these are spatial derivatives isn't it these three derivatives are spatial derivatives and these are second order derivatives now if these are second order derivatives you remember from your fluid dynamics course and uh, the diffusion term in navier stokes you remember partial square u by partial x square that is kind of a diffusion term right so second order derivative so we would call that these terms are diffusion terms okay this term represents energy generation so this term is known as source term right this q dot g this term is known as source term it would kind of uh, it would be responsible for producing energy into the system whatever you are talking about and then this side is the unsteady term right and what is this this is thermal thermal diffusivity if you remember this was alpha equals k over rho cp right and this is basically it it represents a measure of uh, two things how energy is being conducted from a system and the energy is stored within the system so this is the measure of energy conduction and this is the measure of energy storage okay now we need to solve this equation you can see that we have assumed a very generalized infinite control volume and we have derived this equation for conduction conduction through that volume right now the problem is i have only taken one assumption over there and the assumption is that the system is or the material is homogeneous as far as this conductivity is concerned i did not say k is a function of x y or z i did not say that k is simply a constant right that was the only assumption i took in this derivation or as far as this particular version of this equation is concerned now we have this equation and we want to solve it is it a linear equation or a non linear equation just look at that equation once again and tell me is it a linear equation or a non linear equation assume this term as a constant this q dot g term as some constant now now tell me i repeat is it a linear partial differential equation or a non linear partial differential equation so how many for linear 
by the way the linearity and the non linearity is defined by the coefficient of the term the coefficient which is over there now what are those coefficients these are one now if the coefficients are functions of this unknown then it would be a non linear equation if the coefficients of these terms are a function of any of these coefficients is a function of temperature it would be non linear equation now you can see that all the coefficients are constants now this is a linear equation and what is the order it's second order equation okay it is second order equation now let's see now can you see it by the way okay let me solve it over there if i just want to look at okay let's talk about the boundary conditions first why because we are talking about uh, partial differential equation and that partial differential equation where you have t as a function of three vari four variables t x y z and time right now what is the order spatial order of that equation what was the spatial order of that equation spatial order means with respect to spatial variable x y z it is what it is second order in space it is second order in space and what was the order in time it was first order okay now if you want to solve that equation just consider it as a generalized partial differential equation just like you might have seen in your pde course and if i ask you how many initial conditions are required to solve that equation look at this equation very carefully and tell me how many initial conditions now initial conditions are what when time is equal to zero temperature is known initial condition is what when temperature is uh, time is equal to zero it means at the initial time you know the temperature of the system so how many initial conditions are required what is the order of the derivative what is the order of the derivative with respect to time 1 so how many initial conditions are required 1 okay it means you need to know the temperature at time equals 0 if the order is 1 in time initial conditions required are they are this is just one one initial condition is required now if you look at the spatial terms diffusive terms how many boundary conditions are required what is the order second order so second order for this term second order for this term second order in z how many boundary conditions are required six okay just see just consider it as a cube i would explain this thing just consider it as a cube and you are solving the conduction equation to find out temperature distribution within this cube for example so what is the governing equation it is the heat diffusion equation right it is the heat diffusion equation now the problem is you know the temperature at all the points on this cube or within this cube at time equal 0 this is what initial conditions describe like for example you know what is temperature at t not you know that this is initial condition and then how many sides are there by the way these sides represent boundaries of the system these six sides represent boundaries of the system so how many boundary conditions are required you understand that so this is how you can visualize it even if even if you don't have a cube this is just for the sake of an example even if you have a cylinder or a sphere let's say it may be any body and you have this diffusion equation heat diffusion equation and you are to solve this equation on that particular 
a body or object doesn't matter what kind of shape there is but if this is second order in space in x two boundary conditions second order in y two more boundary conditions here two more do you understand that right so it means you need to have six boundary conditions so i hope you understand what is the requirement even if you have all those boundary and initial conditions can you solve this equation come on you are basically uh, having a i think pd course in the last semester okay doesn't matter but you have done it okay so if you have done it can you assure that you are able to solve this equation it is it is very difficult it is very difficult right now what we can do is we would start looking at this system from the very fundamental point we would make it simple and then we would talk about we would increase the complexity level in 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 steps okay now what i can do is i would assume i would assume that the heat i am just talking about heat transfer in a rod where this temperature is given as t1 this temperature is given as t2 let's say and i want to see how heat transfers from one point to the other point let's say t1 is greater than t2 so heat would be flowing in this direction okay so i want to see how temperature is varying within that rod now the point is you can see it is a cylinder kind of body cylinder means where aspect ratio is very small you can say this is the length is large as compared to the diameter so this is a cylinder body so in this case i would not be bothering about the heat transfer in the cross section because the diameter is very small major heat transfer is basically going in one direction so i would say that heat transfer one dimensional let's say this axis is x and this axis is y so i can simplify that equation i would say this is partial square t by partial x square and the rest of the two terms would be neglected rest of the two terms right and then you would have q dot g over k equals 1 over alpha partial t by partial t now this is what this is 1d unsteady heat transfer 1d unsteady heat transfer okay now you have a source over there you have a source within the body for example you in, you have installed a heater within the body or let's say you have burned something within the body there is some kind of combustion or chemical process which is you remember the exothermic and endothermic kind of reactions in your chemistry course so for example you assume that there is some exothermic reaction is happening within the body so if there that is the exothermic reaction q dot g would be positive why because it is producing energy if it is endothermic heat is being absorbed within those chemicals so what you can see it is that that q dot would be negative quantity so whatever it is you would have two initial conditions and one uh, sorry two boundary conditions and one initial condition to solve this equation now this is a generalized representation for one dimensional heat transfer okay similarly if i ask you to find out i write here for example i say that heat transfer is 2d steady state with no heat generation now how would you mathematically describe this quantity remember we are just talking about conduction can you give me the governing equation for this english this phenomena described in english 2d steady state with no heat generation just look at that equation remember that equation it is 2d so let let me write down 
first two terms there is no heat generation so that q dot g term would be zero and then it is steady state so that would be you understand that right so if i say that this is not steady state this is unsteady so it means you need to add temporal term unsteady term okay and the same is the case with 3d right so i hope you understand the physics of all those terms if you ask about the two dimensional system you just need to incorporate two spatial variables over there which are basically diffusive variables second order in, in space and you remember what is the objective of having this partial t by partial t now that is a well known equation which you might have seen in your ordinary differential equation course partial square t by partial x square plus partial square t by partial y square equals 0 what kind of equation it is known as laplace equation this equation is known as laplace equation and if you put some constant over there just like as if you have taken that q dot g term over there then it would be you remember that yes right these are typical equations or you can say these are typical forms of the partial differential equation which you can use which you can remember okay now this is very important where we are to talk about initial condition it is very simple you know what is the temperature at time equal zero no problem at all but the problem comes in the boundary condition right now i am going to talk about types of the boundary conditions types of the boundary conditions you need to solve you need to solve this uh, partial differential equation now if you talk about any pde how many types of uh, boundary conditions are there drishle neumann mixed you remember that so there are three types of boundary conditions in partial differential equation i hope i i spell it correctly drishle condition neumann condition and then you have mixed which is a combo of both of these two right now let me describe it for example what was the unknown there in that equation what was the unknown temperature so drishle condition says that you should describe temperature at the boundaries you should describe temperature at the boundaries neumann condition says you should describe spatial first order spatial derivative on the boundary this is the neumann condition when you describe first order uh, derivative at the boundary let's say instead of saying that this surface has a temperature of uh, for example 20 degree centigrade i would say that partial t by partial x is let's say 1 right so this kind of boundary condition is neumann condition or there is another form which is a combo of both of these two i would say that this is drishle plus neumann i would say that partial t by partial x plus some parameter multiplied by t equals something so that is what this is a mixed condition now we will talk about that no problem at all we will talk about that right just just let me connect this thing with the physics in the next slide i would talk about the particular boundary conditions and how they are related with radiation conduction and convection i will talk about that okay now i hope you understand that there are three types of boundary conditions drishle neumann and mixed in drishle condition you just specify the unknown value which is let's say temperature in this case at boundary you say this is the boundary and it is not going to change for example or you can describe partial t by partial x y or z okay and or you can describe the boundary condition as a combination of both of these two the earlier one and this is known as mixed condition there is another name to it i don't remember but generally it is known as mixed condition now look at this this thing first boundary condition 
this is a specified boundary condition where you can say this is a wall and you are just talking about one dimensional heat transfer so you would say at this value x is equal to 0 and at this point x equals l so you say that t at x equals 0 at all the time equals t1 it means on this side temperature would remain equal to t1 at all the time and temperature at this side would remain equal to t2 or let's say 70 degree centigrade at all the time okay so what kind of boundary condition it would be Drishle. what kind of boundary condition it is Drishle boundary condition you understand that so that's how you describe Drishle boundary condition on the surfaces if you are solving the uh, heat diffusion equation okay let's talk about the second one my point is if you remember this partial t by partial x isn't it a measure of q dot heat transfer rate or heat flux if i say that q dot over area is proportional to partial t by partial x or let's say partial t by partial y or partial t by partial z no problem at all isn't it a measure of heat flux what kind of boundary condition it is Neumann so it means if you describe heat flux on a boundary not the temperature heat flux on the boundary it means you are describing Neumann condition you understand that so it means what I can say is let's say this is the heat flux on this side I represent heat flux and I say that minus k partial t at x equals 0 and all the time divided by part of the derivative with respect to x equals 50. So it means you have given a flux equals 50 over there at this side. 50 units whatever it is. Now there is a special case if I say flux is 0 at this side what does that mean? If I say, now look at this question very carefully. If I say flux is 0 at this boundary, what do you mean by it? Exactly. Temperature is not going to change or let's say the temperature may it be changing but there is no heat transfer from that surface. If partial T by partial X is there and you say that flux is 0 at this surface, so what does that mean? that the heat transfer is not possible from that surface you don't have to uh, you would not get any kind of heat transfer across this surface okay so what does that mean that temperature now there is another depiction which i would use in the later slides temperature on if, if on this surface now be very careful if on this surface uh, flux is zero so you would say that temperature on this side and temperature on this side at the same distance from this surface they are equal isn't it just look at it from a physical point of view why would not be any heat transfer possible through that surface because the temperature across the surface is the same right so I would also call this insulated surface as a symmetric surface I would also call this insulated surface or insulated boundary condition as a symmetry boundary condition by the way these, these are not two the uh, same things as far as the physics is concerned but mathematically they are the same so i would say this is symmetry boundary condition as well if i describe partial t by partial x equals 0 so it may represent these two things insulation and symmetry boundary condition understood just look at this side for example there is a surface just look at this surface uh, this is a surface on this side you have temperature T1 on this side temperature is T2 now the distance of both of these two points they, they have the same distance let's say x1 and x1 right now if I ask you to find out partial T by partial x it is what 
it is zero why because on the same side you would have the same temperature so there is no heat transfer possible through that surface right so what does that mean isn't uh, this surface looking like a mirror whatever you have on this side the same you have on the other side so these kind of boundaries in mathematics you call them as symmetry boundary conditions and in heat transfer there is an advantage of having partial t by partial x equals 0 that describe two two things insulation and symmetry boundary condition okay so i would stop at this point